Hello and welcome to another video. I'm Ben Pearson, former Channel 5 Police Interceptor. And we're bringing you this video today to talk about the death penalty. Stick with us and we'll go through it all from noof to tail. Noof to tail? That's a new one. It's nose to tail, isn't it? Stay with us. <coughs> Fuck that up. And this video today is going to be about the death penalty. Stick with us as we'll talk to you about it. Why, when, how, where, and everything else. Don't go anywhere. I love you. So why are we making this video? We're making this video because currently a recent MP has come out and he says we should bring back the death penalty. This is a massive, massive statement and it causes a lot of controversy around... Controversy. Controversy. <laughs> it's a lot of controversy around the country. It causes a lot of problems for the government, the police and the law itself. Um, and we need to discuss it a little bit further to talk about the death penalty. Let's go. So people think bringing the death penalty back will just make things really, really simple. I, as a police officer, uh, and a, sorry, I, as an ex-police officer, have different variations of feelings about this. So if I said to you, I want the death penalty to come back, um, I don't see why criminals such as Peter Sutcliffe, Myra Inley, or anybody, Ian Huntley, or anybody that has committed murders such as how they've done, should be allowed to stay in the prison for the rest of their life, paid for by government and the public's purse, which probably costs £100,000 a year, if not more, when that money could be spent on the homeless, or the needy, or NHS, why they should be draining our society, and we should feed them, they should be put to death, that is not really the right thing to say at the moment. Should I say that? Should I not say that? Is that my view? I'm just giving you an example. However, it is something that's gone on for hundreds of thousands of years, through every generation, for every culture, in every place on this earth. People have always had the death penalty, and it's only when we got into models of civilization that it became abolished in various places. When we got into the human rights, we abolished the death penalty, um, and I think it's 1963, off the top of my head, was the last person to be executed in the UK. Has time moved on from there and have we become more civilised or has crime become worse? Is it because people are not scared of the laws and the courts anymore and the sentences are hard enough? If we got rid of some of the major criminals in the world and that were behind bars, would that free up space in our courts and in our prisons, which then would be able to sentence longer and harder for those smaller crimes, which then make people scared of the justice system and less crime would be committed? Again, I'm not an expert. I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. Let me know what your thoughts are. Do you think the death sentence is appropriate in today's day and age in 2023? What about for people like Lee Ribby's killers, terrorists, murderers? Um, should it be brought back? I don't know. I'm just giving you this video and letting you know what the thoughts are from someone at my side. In my views, crime has always taken place and will always take place. It will never, ever stop, no matter what we do. If you've seen the film Demolition Man, it's got to the point where crime is outlawed, but also swearing, bad language, bad mannerisms, and you've got to wipe your ass with some seashells. <laughs> he doesn't know how to use the three seashells. <laughs> Do you really want to live in that world? Because I know I don't. I don't use seashells. I use my right hand. Yeah. It's got toilet paper on it, though. <laughs> in regards to the death penalty, what happens if we get it wrong? We have got it wrong before. People have been arrested and then freed 30 years later after saving 30 years of their life imprisonment. What happens if we get it wrong? Can you release them back into society after 30 years? Well, no, you can't because they're dead. So do you have to have 100% proof? Is it caught on CCTV? Is it clear and present that they are 100% guilty? Have they got DNA showing them that they're at the scene? Are the witnesses saying that they were there? If it's 100% accurate that the person has committed that crime, should they be sentenced to the death penalty? But then again, what happens if it's a lie? What happens if DNA is planted? What happens if the criminals have lied? What happens if the witnesses have lied and then someone is executed? You cannot take that back. You cannot dig them back up and put them back together. You cannot make them awake again. It is done and it's sealed. So you, this is a massive, massive responsibility that people need to be aware of when bringing back the death penalty. You've got to ask yourself also, is it humane? 
Should another man take another man's life? Should it be left for the family of the victim to decide what happens to the criminal? Hey, you killed him. <laughs> I never touched him. Yeah, but the frying pan did, didn't it? You were touching that at the time. Bollocks, you killed him. He was dead before he hit the ground. What happens if the royal in law where the family of the victim can turn around and say, I want to forgive that man. I want him to have a prison sentence. I want to forgive that man. I want him to be released, but not to be in the UK. What happens if they turn around and says, I want that man to be executed or that person to be executed? Should it be down to the family of the victim? I don't know. It's not for me to say, I'm just throwing it out there. I want your comments in the section below. I want to know what you think about this because this is a very touchy subject. You have to ask yourself, what are the benefits in regards to the death penalty? Yes, it frees up court space. Yes, it frees up time. And yes, it frees up prison space. But is that all that we are bothered about, getting the space? If so, why don't we build bigger prisons? Why don't we build uh, maximum security prisons on islands somewhere and send people away? I know that is not really what you class as humane, but neither is taking someone else's life. Would you think it's better to find an island in the middle of nowhere? And I'm not talking about somewhere in Barbados that's very, very sunny and got good fish life. I'm just on about somewhere in the world, build a big wall around it, take everything away from the island that could be used for tools, weapons, or anything where they could get off the island, make sure the Navy patrol the shores left and right, and then basically that's it. It's no-go area for everybody, and that the criminals are just sent to that place forever. We don't feed them, we don't fund them, we don't do anything with them. They're just behind these big walls, and they can do what they want on this small little island. There's no food for them, they've got to forage and fan for themselves. Is that a better option than death? Again, I don't know. I am not the voice of the world. I am not the voice of the people. I am just showing it out there. Would that be a better option than the death penalty? Should we as hardworking human beings pay our money into a system where that system then feeds, clothes, houses, murderers, psychopaths, killers and terrorists? Again, um, it's a sticky thing to answer. If a criminal walks up on the street and says, please, can you give me some money? I've just killed someone. What would you say? So therefore, should hardworking people put money into a system where we feed, clothe and house and keep warm murderers, convicted killers, rapists, tourists and everything else of that nature? Um, I don't know myself. I think it's a strange place to be. Do we have the right to play God with someone's life? Just because someone has taken a life, is it our responsibility to decide if that person lives or dies? Is it down to the judge? Is it down to the jury? Or is it down to the family of said victim? That's another question you need to answer and put them in the contents below. Um, Again, my head's spinning with this video. I don't know really what to say and how to go about it because I've got my personal views, but my personal views are my views. And if people air them nowadays, some people say you're pro-death, you're pro-life. Again, it's one of these subjects that, it's a, taboo, uh, sorry, it's a taboo subject that no one really wants to talk about. But is it getting to that place where people are just not scared of the justice system anymore? Are they just not scared of the laws? And are they not scared of the punishment where you could go out and rape someone or kill someone and only be given 15 years? 15 years is not enough for if someone's son, someone's sister, someone's mother, someone's brother. It is not enough. Um, people should be given adequate sentences where life is life. I suppose it's for the people to decide, the people put the government in place, they elect members of the government and it's for the people to voice their opinions. Um, if they put a poll out, how many people in the UK would want the death penalty back? How many people would think it's not humane? And how many people would like to see a change of the law to make life is life? A life for a life, so if you commit murder you will never ever be released from prison again. Um, do all the prison sentences need to be revised? Do the courts need to think about how they sentence people now? and what punishments are given to make it a bigger deterrent. Again, I don't know. I've only made this video for people to think about. Um, again, everyone's got their freedom of speech, freedom of views. But in my opinion, my personal opinion, if it was 100% nailed on, if it was fully DNA'd, fully caught on camera, fully admitted with ten, more than 10 witnesses there who have witnessed an event and it was signed, sealed and delivered, what are the, the wrong things with putting that person to death um again i'm not prime minister i don't know and is it something we should be talking about or just brush it under the carpet ignore it 
that's why I've made this video. I wanted to stir the pot a little bit. I wanted to get you all thinking. Is this MP right in thinking what he's thinking and saying what he's saying? You're the public. You're the ones that decide. It's not down to anyone else. Let us know your thoughts and comments underneath. And if you like the video, please click subscribe. Please share. Please click the bell. 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 Please click the fuck. Please click the bell icon and check us out for our personal website, which is shown below, and our merchandise. And we look forward to seeing you next time. So take care now and bye-bye.